Now let's step back for a minute and have a look at what a catalyst actually does. You probably can't tell, but there's a chemical reaction happening in this beaker right now. This liquid is hydrogen peroxide, just like you may have in your first aid kit. Hydrogen peroxide breaks down to form water and oxygen gas, but we need a catalyst to help this reaction along. Catalysts are chemicals that enable a reaction to proceed, but catalysts are not used up in the chemical reaction. Think of a catalyst as a referee at a sporting event. The referee doesn't play in the sporting event, he just helps to make sure that things go along smoothly. This is how a catalyst works. This is a catalyst. Let's add a little of this catalyst to our hydrogen peroxide. Obviously, a little catalyst makes a big difference. By helping reactions to proceed more easily, catalysts speed up chemical reactions. This is very helpful because many chemical reactions, like the fischer tropsch process, that would take days or even years to proceed without the help of a catalyst. The fischer tropsch process isn't perfect. The problem is that the product is just a mix of alkanes of all different lengths, and only those between 10 and 15 carbons in length are useful as diesel fuel. This can mean a lot of waste. This is where the work of Dr. Brookhart and Dr. Goldman comes in. They have developed a system that uses two different catalysts to convert some of those waste products into new alkanes of useful lengths. They do this with a process called alkane metathesis. Alkane metathesis is a reaction between two alkanes in which they are broken and rearranged to form two new alkanes. The actual process involves several steps and requires the use of two separate catalysts, but we're not going to worry about the details. Let's look at an example. Here are models of hexane, which has six carbon atoms, and octane, which has eight carbon atoms. In metathesis, these two alkanes will be broken and put back together to make two new alkanes. This process is random, so let's break them here and here. The next step is to rearrange these pieces to make two new alkanes. In this case, the result is a model of undecane, which has 11 carbon atoms, and propane, which has three carbon atoms. Even though neither of the starting materials was useful for diesel fuel, one of our broad products, undecane, is useful for diesel fuel. The other product, propane, can even be separated and used as a natural gas. In this way, two waste products have been converted into useful compounds. We can already see the results of the limited supply of oil every time we fill up our cars with gasoline or diesel fuel. In converting our large coal reserves into liquid transportation fuel like diesel could help ease our current demand for oil. On the other hand, there are major problems with the use of diesel fuel from coal. Increased coal mining could cause damage to ecosystems, rivers and streams, and soil. Also, fischer tropsch diesel fuel produces more carbon dioxide than diesel fuel made from oil. That means that switching to this fuel source will not help to alleviate the problem of global climate change. However, it's also possible to use the fischer tropsch process to produce fuels or energy from sources other than coal. For example, biomass such as wood chips or agricultural waste could be used. Since the carbon dioxide released from such fuels would be recycled back into the biosphere, the net greenhouse gas emission would be lower, and fischer tropsch diesel fuel releases less of other types of pollutants that can cause respiratory problems and acid rain than normal diesel fuel. And of course, there would be no need for destructive coal mining. There's no perfect solution to our energy needs, and we'll all have to think about the costs and the benefits of the technology that we use to meet these needs. Fischer-Tropsch fuel may be a part of this solution. So maybe one day, 
When you're filling up your car with synthetic diesel fuel, you'll be able to appreciate the part that Dr. Brookhart from the chemistry department of UNC Chapel Hill and Dr. Goldman from Rutgers played in learning how to produce these fuels. Until then, thank you for watching Science 360, Today's Chemistry, Tomorrow's Fuels, a production of Moorhead Planetarium and Science Center. Thank you.